What up, YouTube? So I just rolled out of bed from a nap to the most pleasant surprise you can wake up to. We just got a bunch of new cards dumped on our plate in light of the new Aphelios update coming in. A lot of people said that we were only getting Aphelios plus his spell card, but that is definitely not the case. So today we're going to take a look at those cards and there's some really cool ones. A lot of these cards are built around very specific archetypes and a lot of those archetypes are really really underplayed archetypes and i think these will make them a lot more competitive so first let's take a look at the patch notes and then we're going to take a look at the new cards all right so there's a lot to look at so let's try and get through these pretty quickly so first of all we're going to be getting a seven day login reward system which is really nice Runeterra is awesome with the way that they give out free rewards, so this will just be a nice little bonus for everyone playing the game. Uh, this will help you get your... This will help everyone get all of their cards in the collection, especially because on day one, it looks like they're giving you an Aphelios right off the bat, which is, which is really awesome. Everyone's going to be playing Aphelios on day one. I love to see it. Next is Misfortune. This is a surprising champion to be nerfed. I thought she was going to get nerfed, but I wasn't expecting her to, nerf this, to be nerfed this way. I think this is a healthy change. I just wasn't expecting it. But uh, overall, I agree with it. She already has a pretty beefy stat line for what she provides. She does a lot of AoE board damage. And I honestly don't think that, um, you know, it's cool having Overwhelm with what she already does when she levels up because it allows her to punch face a lot harder when she flips. It gives her a lot more lethal power when she flips, but I don't think it was necessary. Before, if you didn't have, even if you had chump blockers for MF when she flipped, you just couldn't block her. So you, she was pretty much dealing seven damage to you all the time when she flipped, especially with the tempo of MF decks. But now, looks a lot more reasonable to deal with her so they removed the overwhelm uh, removing overwhelm or um you know very specific keywords like lifesteal or um, elusive uh, these kind of very high game impacting keywords that either drag out the game to an ultimate win condition or provide you a win condition through overwhelm or elusive just outright removing something like that is a huge nerf to the card um this in combination with another nerf that we'll see later on down the road this is a huge huge nerf to scouts i think we might still see them around but i definitely don't think they're a tier one deck anymore so let's keep going victor he's seeing several really big buffs first of all he's going to from eight created cards to level up to seven this is a nice little buff but what's really going to help him a lot is instead of getting a hex core after the turn you play him, you're getting a hex core on play and round start. So you're getting to immediately right when you play him, you can have bank spell mana in order to push him number one to three damage, which uh, three, four with a keyword and augment is just a much more well-rounded stat line card. And it makes him a bit more reasonable to play. He's still not gonna be crazy because you still have to coin flip one of these better keywords, like I mentioned before, whether it's, um, something for Victor that you really like at the very start is tough in order to allow him to generate more keywords or one of these game-changing keywords like Elusive or Overwhelm or Lifesteal. Um, so you still have to be in this kind of narrow range of keywords in order to see him really pop off. So it kind of still makes him RNG focused, but this does make him a lot more consistent because you're going to be progressing him a lot sooner into the game. So before he was pretty much impossible to play. Now I think he'll see a reasonable amount of play, especially in these augment type decks. Him getting that hex core immediately on play just helps out all the augment cards. Um, so that is really, really great news for Victor. Moving on, this is the other change I was referring to. So Grand Plaza is moving from plus one, plus one over to plus one plus zero. They're still getting challenger. This still allows um, low cost units to trade up, but it doesn't make them impossible to clear anymore. So if you're playing removal type decks like Ezreal, you're still going to have a pretty good time into lists like this. So this overall is a giant, giant nerf to Plaza decks. I still think Plaza is going to be playable. I think some of the, um, 
Some of the context that Plaza was played in like Ephemerals, that's still going to be very good because with Challenger and the additional damage is really what they wanted anyways. So I think this nerfs it in the way that some of the already strong cards were abusing this card. And it's also going to it's also going to unrestrict Demacia. Right now, Demacia is very restricted to where if you're not playing Plaza inside of Demacia, you're pretty much not playing Demacia. Like, it, it's the most popular card inside of Demacia. It's the most frequently played card, even over single combat, which hasn't happened since the game was launched. Uh, single combat has always been more the most popular card, but now it's Plaza. And seeing a landmark... Um, being the most popular card is just not very fun to in my opinion especially one like this where it just gives you everything you would want something in order to remove their board force favorable trades you have more hp you know the whole works right so getting that extra hp removed off of grand plaza is really nice it's really nice it allows you more counterplay playing against it and also breathes some room for other decks to shine inside of uh inside of demacia because i think there's a lot of cool archetypes kind of sitting under the surface moving on war chefs is being moved from 1-3 to 2-2. Two, two. When this card originally got nerfed, this completely gutted the archetype. Now, it being at 2-2 two, two is a lot more reasonable. Now, it doesn't just... Um, it had a problem where if you were supporting another card, Warshafts could not trade onto something. It being at 3 health, it made it very tanky, um, but it pretty much just couldn't trade onto anything, or it could be a ignored whenever it swung and it didn't provide really any damage towards the nexus or progressing the game uh, fast enough to be warranted played now whenever you play it it's a little bit more risky because it's easier to clear but it means that things can't just block it um, and get a two for one trade uh, out of out of war chef so this is a lot more playable of a card and also it kind of inadvertently buffs lulu because i know that archetype completely got removed from the game whenever this card got nerfed i think this is a better state for the card i still wasn't a huge um hater on two three war chefs personally i i think we'll see more of this card is it good enough for it to be played i don't know because the support archetype has a lot of other issues already anyways so we'll just have to see this change in combination with a change to hush later on it may bring bring back supports it's possible it just kind of depends on how the meta shifts but uh, we'll just have to see for this one overall great change so far all amazing changes so homecoming is also getting a buff homecoming is going from five cost to four cost which is a huge benefit to decks such as yasuo this is basically like the old mana flexibility of will of ionia but you're restricted on the board this helps out um, decks that like to put tempo on the board um, but doesn't necessarily help out control decks such as old spooky karma so you're not getting the old stall potential that something like Spooky Karma once had because you don't want to be replaying the units that you had before. Although those units are probably small cost units that are just chump blocking such as um, Hapless Aristocrat, um, you still don't want to be replaying that ideally inside of a control list. You want to be clearing cards and stalling the game as efficiently as possible and I don't know if this outweighs Will of Ionia but this does help these mid-range type decks uh, like Yasuo out a lot because this is two recalls for four mana. Uh, that is a lot, a lot of value. So this card will definitely see more play. However, do I think it's going to be a staple in the meta? Do I think it's going to be meta defining? No, probably not. But it is in a much, much better spot. And anything to help out Yasuo is, is probably a good thing. I'm worried that eventually we're going to see some kind of um, card that will draw Yasuo and Yasuo will be overpowered at that point because as of right now he's looking really good especially with Aphelios coming into the game which is going to be giving you a stun engine that can set up Yasuo really well and if you're playing that inside Targon if you're playing Aphelios and um, Yasuo together you can run something like Solari Priestess and get the um into the stars card i think that's what it's called where it draws you a champion that might help you find yasuo a little bit better so yasuo is starting to be set up in a spot where he might actually be playable especially with a lot of the current meta list being being hit you could possibly see some yasuo running around um so overall i love to see this buff um but nothing too crazy green glade elder buff 
absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. Um, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. I am very surprised to see a buff this way. I was expecting to see some kind of buff to this card eventually, but definitely not this. So it getting three damage means that this isn't a dead card whenever you play it. It going to two damage would have been a minor buff, but not enough to see play. 3-1 allows this card to trade onto other cards, plus giving your whole hand buffs. If you throw this inside of a deck that is revolving around self-recalling, um, such as uh, Homecoming or Retreat, um, this card is going to flourish, honestly, inside of a deck like that. Buffs don't matter unless the cards that are being statted have the ability to actually consistently damage the Nexus. So we'll probably see this tried out inside of something like Elusive. Previously, Elusives were basically unplayable as an archetype because there was just way too much lifesteal. There was way too much people playing removal decks such as Feel the Rush and uh, Ezreal Draven and there was just Hush flying around, Targon flying around. You were basically unable to end the game. The meta might shift and we might see some kind of self and buff type deck with a lot of recall but honestly it's a kind of a slow archetype i don't expect to see this card seeing much play even still just because i don't think the meta is really right for it maybe in the future however it, it might change maybe with um a lot less of plaza going around the elusives can shine but at least in the current meta elusives are unplayable so um, especially with sharp sight running around there's just too many answers for the elusive so i don't know if this will bring back elusives i'm assuming it won't or it's kind of like a ticking time bomb i think this will eventually see some play and i'm very happy to see green glade elder being buffed because this card has been unplayable since inception all right a card that i was not expecting to get nerfed at all captain farron is receiving a nerf um, he's going from three created decimates down to two I think overall this is probably healthier. I didn't really have a problem with the state that Farron was in, but I do agree that Farron was kind of like an instant game over button a little too consistently. So him going down to two decimates kind of requires him to swing successfully at least once. And I think that's more reasonable with the hush nerf we're getting later on. Um, I didn't see it coming. I wouldn't have been mad if this didn't get nerfed. Seeing it nerfed, also doesn't bother me because if a lot of these other meta decks are getting hit and Ezreal Draven doesn't get hit, that's going to be a problem. I think Ezreal Draven is set up in a really, really good spot, especially with Plaza being completely shut down in the health department. That really helps out Ezreal deck. So um, this was a, a good preemptive nerf in my opinion, but at the same time, I'm kind of surprised to see it. Riven's Blade of the Exile. Um... A lot of the nerfs we're seeing are kind of slowing down the tempo of the game. So um, some meta decks that we see right now, they once they turn online, they're online immediately and they're ending the game within like the next turn or two. As soon as they get a grasp on the board, the game's just kind of over. So Riven might see a little bit more play. This is a very, very big buff. Going from three mana to one mana is a extremely big buff, but you still have to get to that point, and that's why a buff like Blade Squire is also really good. A card going from one, two to two, one is just about the biggest buff you can give to a one mana type card. Um, that kind of stat shift allows this card to now trade onto the two mana cards that have two HP. Um, which is really, really important because before this couldn't trade at all. This was strictly just a reforge engine and something that would slow the game down in order for you to build up enough reforges where um, realistically Riven could get Blade of the Exile off. Now it's looking a little bit more tempo oriented, which is, which is really nice for Riven. All right, let's move on. Hush is getting nerfed from two mana to three mana. I love it. Hush originally was three mana, summon more hush, fleeting hushes upon use. Then it was two mana and now it's three mana. I think this is a much better spot for the card. Purify is a permanent silence for two mana on followers. This card can shut down any win condition on any champion or any major unit. It can stop everything for one turn for three mana. I think that's a very balanced spot for it to be in. Um, 
I think with Targon having Hush, it's still going to be a threat. I think we're still going to see this card being played as a one or two of, but I don't think it's going to be nearly as prevalent. I think this is going to shift the amount of people playing Targon right now um, quite a bit, especially with the Pale Cascade uh, nerf. These two mana type cards were just way, way too good at just everything. They were too good at everything. So seeing both of these cards nerfed will shift the play rate of Targon a lot. And I think we will see people go into Targon with a lot more of a, a purpose. So I was playing Scarground inside Targon just because these type of cards were too overloaded. Now, I think if you want to play Targon, you're going into Targon specifically for the amount of lifesteal that they're providing. None of their lifesteal or healing is getting nerfed. I think that's a healthier route for the game. Take away some of their their well-rounded options and make them a region designed around a certain mechanic. I like this. So seeing this card nerf to three mana and seeing Pale Cascade nerf to one one rather than two one, maybe plus two plus zero would have been better, but one one is also very good. It allows it to where this isn't getting the trade up as often, and um, especially from small units like, um, forgetting the drag the the one that summons the dragon links the two mana one three that summons the dragon links i can't remember her name but <clears throat> she used to be able to trade up onto bigger cards really easily now she can't as much so this is a big hit to the lee sin deck especially um this card will still see play it's still a good card but it's uh just like hush not a answer all situation it's just going to be a very well-rounded answer which is fine which is perfectly fine for targon all right now that is the end of the patch notes let's go ahead and go into the new cards so these are the new so these are the new cards that are coming with aphelios um we're still missing aphelios's spell card so i don't know how many more cards we're getting but this is more cards than i was expecting to get with this little mini set uh, it's pretty exciting because this means when we get more mini sets in the future It seems like they're gonna come with a splash of flavor for every region and a lot of these cards are targeted at um, Underplayed playstyles, which is really really great So let's go ahead and go through these one by one the flight one mana elusive card when this strikes the nexus It's going to put this back into the deck and draw one um the way it's worded is you're going to draw the first one first. You can't redraw this card, but it's a well-statted elusive card, um, and it gives you a, a little bit of a draw engine in the early game. It lets you punch a little bit of damage down and, and lets you draw one. I don't know what kind of deck is really going to want this. Some kind of deck that is just going to be drawing as frequently as possible. Um, we talked a little bit about how elusives are set up in a bit better of a spot. Um, because of the recall mechanics getting a little bit better and the self buffs mechanics getting a little bit better. This is either going to be something that you play in a lot of decks or we're not gonna see it at all. I'm really not sure which I'm leaning towards. I'm, I'm leaning more towards uh, my initial gut reaction is I don't think we're gonna see this card very much. Um, it could be a good card to defend early elusive drops in certain metas, like if we're seeing this could be a good answer for Zoe. This could be a good answer for like Teemo or whatever have you. Maybe we'll see this played in those kind of metas. And if they don't end up dropping it turn one and you end up dropping it turn one and you get an extra strike, well, you're going to be getting draw. You're going to be getting basically refunded the cost of playing this card. Um, I, yeah, I don't know though. I, I really don't know. I am strongly against elusives being that good in this next patch so a deck completely built around elusives and this being in it i think it's just ultimately going to be too slow so yeah i'm not seeing it but uh let's go ahead and move on to the next card one mana piltover burst card stress testing remove fleeting from all cards in hand when i'm discarded draw one fleeting this is a discard aggro card pretty much through and through um, I'm trying to think of another use for it. Off the top of my head, I can't. Uh, remove fleeting from all cards in hand. This could be good inside of these um, draw fleeting cards inside of Bilgewater. There is a four mana card that when it attacks, it draws two fleeting. 
this could be decent with that because there's a lot of cards that have draw inside of um, Bilgewater, but it draws it as fleeting and it doesn't end up being as valuable. So we might see this played in those kind of archetypes. A part of me really doubts that though. This is this seems like a discard aggro type card when I'm discarded, draw one fleeting. Um, but then the question is, why why play this, right? Why play this instead of some other card when, like why would you wanna draw this and discard this rather than playing some other card? What, in, in what way would you want to remove fleeting from something in hand? Even discard aggro, a lot of times they like emptying their hand because of Jinx, so. Um, I'm having, I'm, I'm, I can kind of see where it could be played, but I'm also in the same way as the first card. I'm, I'm kind of having a hard time seeing, uh, in an ideal world, I kind of see where it's played, but I'm having a hard time seeing it actually get played. So I think this is probably not going to see a lot of play unless it's played in some kind of bilge water deck that, uh, I can't really think of how how those type of archetypes are really going to play out. Maybe maybe they play in sort of a mid-range heavier playstyle, especially with um, Targon being nerfed. Maybe we're going to see like Gangplank type deck and see see this inside of Piltover and we're going to see Brash, I think her name is Brash Gambler or something like that. We're going to see this played with that. I don't know. I have a hard time seeing it, but we'll just have to see. Two mana, three one, the sky's shadows. Uh, when I'm summoned, refill two mana in hand if you behold a Nightfall card. So this is specifically made for Nightfall decks. I think Nightfall needs a lot of help. Them getting a card that basically refunds itself if you have a Nightfall card in hand and being a 3-1 a heavily statted offensive card is really good. So basically what it's saying is you can play this and then you can also play a Nightfall spell with it on turn two and you can use something like Pale Cascade to defend it or something like that. This this helps out Nightfall a lot, especially with Pale Cascade seeing a nerf. That is a huge nerf to Nightfall and it was already not seeing much play at all. So them getting a card like this that is just honestly a very overloaded card but specifically designed for Nightfall decks, I think it's kind of... Nightfall needs a couple more of these to be really good. This might make Nightfall playable to an extent or a little bit more playable than they are now but i don't think it's going to make them crazy overpowered and just with the way that the card is statted and what mana the card is sitting at two mana it's not like a super game changing card it's just going to give you a little bit more tempo in the early game which which is great for nightfall but once again i see the deck that it's supposed to be played in but is it good enough in order to push that deck into the meta i'm not sure and there's a lot of cards like that in this group of cards. Such as Troll Gifts. Grant an ally regeneration for two mana burst. If they already have it, grant them plus two plus two instead. Plus two plus two is a lot of stats. But do those stats matter if they're not overwhelm? So there's there's some cards that have regeneration and overwhelm. Maybe we will see those, those cards come a little bit more into the meta. Um, does that 2-2 two, two matter a lot of the time? In a lot of in a lot of cards, does it matter enough? I don't think so. One card that comes to mind is the five mana, four, five with regeneration and overwhelm. Pairing this with that could be a really nasty combo. Like just giving a card 2-2 two, two and it being all of a sudden a six, seven on turn five, you're punching a lot of damage. You're trading up on any single card they could have played up to that point. It becomes extremely difficult to remove. It was already a kind of difficult card to remove. This is going to be really good. Um, just as a side note, if you decide to play some kind of troll deck inside of Expedition, you happen to draw this, like this is <laughs> this is the kind of like the GG deck because this is the ultimate value card. Um, but in terms of constructed, maybe we'll see it played but again does the rest of the surrounding cards are they good enough in order to allow this to be meta i'm not sure i'm not sure a lot of these cards are just they're really cool in concept but is the card surrounding it good enough i don't know but this does set it up in a spot where like a lot of these cards if we get another one of these really good cards into this archetype if we get a nut where these are designed for very specific archetypes. You can't just like slot this into really anything, most of these cards here. So if we get like one or two more of these type of cards in these archetypes, these archetypes are gonna be very powerful. So 
with the direction we're seeing a lot of these new cards coming um, is very promising for the future but as of right now just a lot of these i really don't know i do not know starbone if you behold the messenger grant celestial allies everywhere plus one plus one uh this is supposed to be paired with um the messenger's sigil <laughs> most likely i have a iceborne dog deck that is very terrible <laughs> and this will definitely help that deck out a lot uh enough to be played probably not <laughs> i i think uh messenger sigil is too slow um but this might make it worth playing because it's not just the the messengers getting the plus one plus one it's all celestial cards going to plus one plus one so if you're playing it might give you more of a reason to play some kind of control archetype with uh with messenger sigil in it because um pulling out a bunch of draw low cost highly statted if they're all three three two mana cards that are drawing all of a sudden that seems like a pretty good card to be running it seems it seems main deckable maybe we're seeing some kind of a zoe karma control deck with messenger signal and starbone maybe uh it, it's hard to say especially with hush and pale cascade getting nerfed there is still a lot of healing in that region but um yeah, it, it's pretty hard to say. I could see it getting played, but dropping a bunch of 3-3s three for 2 mana, it's decent, but at the end of the day, it's not what you need to win the game. A bunch of decently statted units doesn't end up winning you the game because stats just don't matter all that much if they're not paired with great keywords. So uh, unlike this one, where um, you, it's kind of designed to be paired with keywords that are already beneficial this one isn't so i'm not sure these permanent stats matter as much as something like troll gifts all right gluttony kill an ally with last breath to summon a follower from your deck that costs one more very interesting card um it's designed for the last breath type archetype inside of uh ephemeral or not ephemeral something like um I'm forgetting a lot of card names today. Undying, we might see this inside of some kind of undying, some kind of self-kill list. Um, once again, another trend where we're seeing a underplayed archetype, getting a card specifically designed around it where it is very strong, but it's not strong in any other deck. Um, once again, I don't think this pushes it into the super viable range, but this does take these type of decks out of like meme tier and put them at least in like playability range, which is good to see. Um, I haven't looked at all the cards to see if there's like a very specific um, synergy that I'm completely missing out on. But uh, on first glance, I'm not really thinking of a whole lot that could be too, too crazy. Maybe we're seeing this paired with... Um, Maybe we're seeing it paired with some kind of like really close to mono Shadow Isles list and it's pulling out the Wraith Callers, but a card like this, Wraith Callers are more of a fearsome type deck that wants to go pretty fast. A card like this um, being paired with Undying, Undying is kind of a slow outvalue grindy type of deck, so I'm not sure if we're going to see that, uh, that played in that type of list, but we'll just have to see. Flurry of Fist, three mana, burst, grant an ally, plus one, and quick attack. If it already has it, grant it double attack instead. This card reminds me of a time where we had standalone Zed running around. Because this is grant. You're, you're granting someone plus one in quick attack, and it grants them double attack instead otherwise. So we might see this paired with something like maybe Demacia so we're getting Cinna, Lucian, we're seeing we're seeing Zed and we're seeing this card paired with them on turn three for a big big hit if they don't have something blocking them or we might see it paired with something like um something like some kind of uh quick attack Yasuo type deck so that way we can go more into the Noxus category and we might see it played inside of that region so that way we can get some overwhelm cards paired with this card um i think this is a very interesting card i think it turns a lot of almost good decks into actually viable type decks i think we could see this card being paired with like shiraza um 
Kato plus bank three mana. This is a burst card. You play all of these in combination with each other, and then you're looking at an overwhelm, um, quick attack so it doesn't just instantly die, you know, type card where you're not just getting the value off of one punch. You're seeing you're seeing the value add up a little bit more over each turn and force them to have removal. And especially with Hush getting nerfed, cards like this can actually see a bit more play. Um, once again, though, <laughs> I don't know if it's good enough to take it on a meme tier. I think that this has the possibility to make some kind of Zed list very, very scary. Um, because Zed with quick attack, both him and his shadow having or having double attack after casting this, and plus one stats, like that is really strong. That is really strong. You are spending all your mana, so you don't have Nopify mana in order to keep them safe. So it's a very all-in play style. And uh, we'll just have to see if there's enough good quick attack unit surrounding it but something like a zed deck with this with lucian senna rally like it could be really strong it could be really strong so i think out of all the cards we've seen so far this one is the strongest that we're looking at so far in my opinion let's move on the fangs four mana three two very easy to clear very easy to clear but you are getting a lifesteal unit that's invoking so an invoke type style card that is very lowly weighted on the health so it can be cleared but you're also getting life steal. this is the direction that seems like they're taking targon i would like to see them not have nearly as super well-rounded cards and them to just have a bunch of healing cards if that's what it is so invoke slash healing if that's where they want to take targon that's where they want to take targon i still think that the celestial cards are overtuned. i still think a lot of the celestial cards do need nerf so cards like this are a little bit scary but do I think it's anything crazy? No, I don't. I think that um, there are enough cards that summon things at three cost or less that do the job better. And I think there are healing cards um, that do the job better as well. And I don't know if there, if those type of lists are going to be so tightly competitive where you need to run a card that is a combination of both like the fangs. I think you will just want to independently run this is a healing card and this is an invoke card. I don't think that this card is is going to be played very much just because of the 2 HP. Being able to be cleared by a mystic shot or being able to be traded up by like pretty much any one mana viable card um, just doesn't seem good enough. Even if you're getting three health out of it and an invoke out of it, it doesn't seem good enough to me. The Veiled Temple. Each round, the first time you play two other cards, refill two mana, and grant your strongest ally plus one plus one. The first card that comes to mind is Aphelios, obviously. So you, you play Aphelios plus his summon card, but another card that comes to mind is some kind of augment type deck with Victor or something. And this just being a value engine for that type of deck. This is going to compete with the spot for Victor. This is four mana. Um, turn a lot of four mana type cards aren't very good. So this isn't a super competitive spot. But when you're talking about these, these type of decks that are playing multiple cards per, per turn in order for a, a benefit like plus one, plus one plus one to be valuable enough, you're talking about these grindy augment type decks a lot of the times, or at least that's what comes to my mind initially. I'm not sure this is good enough. Refilling two mana does make a big difference inside of Philios. Maybe we'll see this inside of Aphelios list. Maybe this does end up making the cut, but on initial glance, I don't see this card being that great. Um, but it might be super good with the decks that it's good with, but it's not going to be like a play all type card along with the rest of these type cards. Like all these cards are very designed towards a certain deck and this definitely speaks to me in that regard. And it speaks to me a lot in the same way that a lot of these do where it seems good, but is the rest of the deck good enough to support how good this card is um, or could be in a, in a list that it's designed for? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Powder Pandemonium. Summon a, a Powder Monkey and give me a random, uh, give a random enemy vulnerable this round for each time you've activated Plunder this game. Inside of something like um, a Gangplank deck, we might see this getting a good amount of value. Um, the first one that initially comes to mind is this seems like a decent way to end the game for some kind of Gangplank MF deck. Um, but with MF getting a hit, I'm not sure if we'll see 
this card getting played as much with that but that is the archetype that initially speaks to me to be able to proc plunder the most frequently um, especially with its very valuable one drops that kind of guarantee you plunder um, but other than that there's not a whole lot of decks that proc plunder frequently enough in my opinion for this to get a lot of value frequently enough and to have enough board space to play this um, aggro is kind of the one that speaks to me the most um, we, we might see this played inside of pirate aggro but four mana kind of seems a little too heavy to me my initial reaction is that this card isn't isn't that great but maybe it does end up being a good enough top end to to justify it maybe we do end up proccing plunder reasonably three times by turn six and this gives you basically three guaranteed damage uh, three vulnerables you're removing three of their blockers off the field and maybe it does end up being a crazy game ender but this kind of requires a lot of stars to align for this card to work so it it has to be put into a list that is designed for this card so inside of aggro it might be good enough i could see it seeing play inside of aggro it kind of is like a, a diff an alternate version of a decimate but um yeah, we will we will just have to see i could that's the only deck that i could see this getting played in and inside of that deck i could see it being very powerful in terms of everything else though um maybe some kind of gangplank mid-range possibly because you're also focusing on plunder in that deck but for the most part it's not really speaking to me in any other way but it does seem strong inside of that aggro playstyle. wild claws this card seems crazy this card seems really good to me there are a couple problems with this card but I think it's really strong. So it's basically single combat, but if the unit that you're targeting, if your ally unit has overwhelm, you're dealing the excess damage to the enemy. So it's kind of like a finisher plus a single combat for five mana and it being slow. It is really heavy, but it seems like a great ender. This combined with Darius seems crazy because Darius is 10 damage overwhelm. You being able to just on command deal 10 damage, it's kind of like a little mini rally and a mini a mini single combat all combined into one. Um, this does get shut down by Hush, but Hush being nerfed, we might see a lot less of that going around. This might give you the over the top that something like a Darius deck is really needing right now in order to see play with the amount of healing that's in the game. If you're able to just drop this at the start of the round, remove one of their blockers and then swing, like it can be crazy or swing and then drop this or target something that's really small on the enemy board and, and just over the top deal a bunch of damage on a defending turn like there's a lot of ways that i could see this card being really good so far out of every card i've seen this and wild claws seem to be the best in my opinion i might be super surprised by powder pandemonium but wild claws seems situationally really good i could see this card being shut down really hard but the darius archetype is already an archetype that could just get shut down if you play into certain lists you could just get shut down really hard like you play this vengeance boom darius is dead and you just wasted five mana like it could be really bad but into those type of lists where you were gonna get vengeance anyways you were probably gonna lose the game anyway so um yeah i i like this card a lot it it plays into a play style that i was already playing around so something like sejuani and uh, Darius, I could see seeing a lot of play with a card like this because it just plays into what they want to do really, really nicely. The Cloven Way, five mana, overwhelm, five, four. Decent stats. Nightfall, stun an enemy. If it's a follower, stun it again at the next round. I could see this generating a lot of value with Yasuo because I'm seeing a lot more ways for Yasuo to be played inside of Targon. Um, I could also see this being decent inside of some kind of mid-range tempo heavy list like like um like aphelios possibly the only problem is nightfall in both of those lists getting this to be procced with nightfall is going to be pretty tricky um i don't i off the top of my head i don't know enough about nightfall decks to tell you how good this is going to be inside of nightfall um 
maybe it gives you that mid game game ending power that you need especially with it having overwhelm the overwhelm is really what sells this card to be very strong being able to stun their best blocker and then having a 5-4 overwhelm where you're not going to be able to chump block it it does help you in the game i think this card could be very strong in the same way this is really strong it just kind of depends really how good these nightfall decks are surrounding it because nightfall just didn't have great representation before so i didn't get the best impression off of playing nightfall previously but maybe these cards push it over the edge possibly i'm leaning towards this being really really strong and this being situationally good because uh, i don't know i don't know if it's enough yes you are stunning a big unit which oftentimes allows this to hit twice but is a five damage overwhelm unit hitting twice valuable enough when you compare it to something like wild claws of darius just like completely ending the game right with a five mana cost card you're just ending the game or sejuani being in this spot and and just completely you know you can't dodge it you don't have to set it up with nightfall you just drop her and you get to pull whoever you want and you get to hit the nexus anyways and it kind of functions a little bit the same you know what i mean and such one is six mana i know that but i'm just comparing it to other cards that are kind of sitting in this area doing kind of the same thing and i don't know if this does it well enough so i think this is very good for nightfall i don't know if this is the mid game over the top that nightfall needs in order to be pushed over the edge but it having overwhelm is a very good sign it makes it easy to buff this card's stat line and it seeing be able to see a lot more play but as of right now i'm i'm leaning towards this card being a little bit too tricky to proc but maybe i'll be super surprised by nightfall because my i haven't played nightfall a lot because it just hasn't been good enough but maybe it's super easy to proc nightfall in retrospect i'm not really sure i just don't have enough experience with that deck archetype to say if this is good enough to push it over the edge but maybe maybe it having overwhelm is a very big deal so that is the best thing it has going for it um, but we'll just have to see molten breath slow an ally with fury strikes the two weakest enemies so it's kind of like a slow it's it's designed for dragons for sure demacia dragons and it's designed to clear the chump blockers away and possibly designed for um to help shivana flip inside the turn so that way whenever you attack you're not flipping her after the attack you're attacking with her already flipped so you can have the single combat with her it kind of speeds up the tempo of shivana this is cool in the way that wild claws is cool but wild claws has the potential just in the game right there molten breath is like it could in the game, but it has to be very situational. Um, it doesn't say, it says that it strikes the two weakest enemies. I'm not sure if that necessarily means, I don't think that means they strike each other. So maybe it does just like strike the two weakest enemies on its own and becomes a super potent removal card. Um, I'm not quite sure with the wording. Um, maybe it is good enough it doesn't seem crazy it seems really good for dragons because dragons are in a bad spot you will definitely see this played inside of dragons but is it good enough to bring them into the meta my initial gut reaction is no um because when you compare it to something like wild claws wild claws is just straight up ending the game for you like this is this is a crazy card if it pops if this pops it's still countered in the same way if if you just get removed you're screwed um, if you get hushed you're screwed so in the same way it gets countered like wild claws but it has a lot more vulnerabilities and it has a lot less payoff and it is very expensive so it will see play inside of its archetype because its archetype is in a very bad spot um, is it good enough to bring them into the meta i don't think so because it is such an easy card to play around that if this ever did become meta, it's so easy to counterplay. So it's great, but it's not going to make dragons meta or anything, but you will see it played. So perfectly balanced card for an archetype that is, that is struggling. Now, an archetype that's struggling 
needs OP cards. <laughs> so it's not gonna make them crazy or anything, but it is a very balanced card and it is very interesting. All right, this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, a lot of these cards in summary in the patch note section, amazing changes. I love pretty much every change. Uh, I love the direction that they're going. In terms of the new cards, I like the direction of the cards. Um, some of them, such as Flurry of Fists and Wild Claws and possibly Powder Pandemonium, are really, really cool. Um, some of these other ones, they're cool in concept, but I'm not sure if they're good enough. A lot of these other ones, I like the way they're designed towards a specific archetype that is struggling, especially since when we get a big expansion, I don't want all of the cards just being like, well, this one's for this archetype, this one's for this archetype. I don't want that, but for a small expansion, for them to be like, these are the archetypes that are struggling. And this is our way of, you know, trying to deal with this archetype, trying to deal with this one, and, and going one by one and giving everyone a little bit of help and and making it to where the help isn't just like um, Pale Cascades where it's a Nightfall card, but it's great for everyone. This is, this is a way of circumventing that kind of issue. I really love the way that these cards are designed. I wish I had more of a, a gut reaction towards most of them. My gut reaction is this one's not gonna be very good, not gonna be very good. Good card, but don't know if the archetype's good enough. I don't think the archetype's good enough, but good card. Um, don't think it's gonna be very good. Gluttony, I don't, my initial reaction is I don't think it's gonna be very good, but I, I, this one's difficult because I would have to really look at the list of cards that it could be paired with. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what the, what the combos are. Um, I think this card will see a, a decent amount of play and I think it could be very strong. I think this card will see a small amount of play and could be very strong. I think Wild Claws will see a small amount of play because the archetype isn't um, that popular and I think it's going to be potentially very strong. Veiled Temple, I don't think it's gonna be very good, um, but maybe Aphelios will surprise me, but I think he's gonna have, I think he's gonna have some issues that are kind of similar to Victor where it takes him too long to ramp up. But Unlike Victor, he gets to pick where he starts and he gets to pick which stats he's getting, which gives him a big, big advantage. Plus you get to play him earlier on into the game. So maybe this card will surprise me. I don't think Fangs is that good. Cloven Way, I'm not getting the best of vibes from Cloven Way. I think it's set up to be a good card, but um, the Nightfall proc and the Nightfall proc is really what's gonna make this card crazy. And I don't really know how hard it is because I'm not experienced enough in Nightfall. And Molten Breath's a really cool card. I'm excited to play it because I love dragons, but I don't uh, I don't think the card is um, meta-defining in any sort of way. It's just very good for that archetype. All right, let's wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit it with a like. Hit it with a, hit it with a comment if you like. Tell me what you think is going to be very good. Tell me some of your gut reactions on any of the changes. I would love to hear them. Um, I probably got something wrong in this video as well because it was so damn long tell me if i made any mistakes all right enjoy the rest of y'all's day i will see y'all tomorrow on the release of the expansion live on my channel hope to see you there take it easy peace